The Imitation of Christ by Thomas Akempis Book 3, Chapters 41 to 50 Chapter 41 Of Contempt of All Temporal Honour My son, make it no matter of thine, if thou see others honoured and exalted, and thyself despised and humbled. Lift up thine heart to me in heaven, and then the contempt of men upon earth will not make thee sad. O Lord, we are in blindness and are quickly seduced by vanity. If I look rightly within myself, never was injury done unto me by any creature, and therefore I have naught whereof to complain before thee. But because I have many times and grievously sinned against thee, all creatures do justly take arms against me. Therefore to me confusion and contempt are justly due, but to thee praise and honour and glory. And except I dispose myself for this, namely to be willing that every creature should despise and desert me, and that I should be esteemed altogether as nothing, I cannot be inwardly filled with peace and strength, nor spiritually enlightened, nor fully united to thee. Chapter 42 That Our Peace Is Not To Be Placed In Men My son, if thou set thy peace on any person, because thou hast high opinion of him, and art familiar with him, thou shalt be unstable and entangled. But if thou betake thyself to the ever-living and abiding truth, the desertion or death of a friend shall not make thee sad. In me ought the love of thy friend to subsist, and for my sake is every one to be loved, whosoever he be, who appeareth to thee good, and is very dear to thee in this life. Without me, friendship hath no strength or endurance, neither is that love true and pure which I unite not. Thou oughtest to be so dead to such affections of beloved friends, that as far as in thee lieth, thou wouldst rather choose to be without any companionship of men. The nearer a man approacheth to God, the further he recedeth from all earthly solace. The deeper also he descendeth into himself, and the viler he appeareth in his own eyes, the higher he ascendeth towards God. But he who attributeth anything good to himself hindereth the grace of God from coming to him, because the grace of the Holy Ghost ever seeketh the humble heart. If thou couldst make thyself utterly nothing, and empty thyself of the love of every creature, then should it be my part to overflow into thee with great grace. When thou settest thine eyes upon creatures, the face of the Creator is withdrawn from thee. Learn in all things to conquer thyself for the Creator's sake, then shalt thou be able to attain unto divine knowledge. How small soever anything be, if it be loved and regarded inordinately, it holdeth us back from the highest good, and corrupteth. Chapter 43 Against Vain and Worldly Knowledge My son, let not the fair and subtle sayings of men move thee, for the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. 1 Corinthians 4 verse 20 Give ear to my words, for they kindle the heart and enlighten the mind. They bring contrition, and they supply manifold consolations. Never read thou the word, that thou mayest appear more learned or wise, but study for the mortification of thy sins, for this will be far more profitable for thee than the knowledge of many difficult questions. When thou hast read and learned many things, 
thou must always return to one first principle. I am he that teacheth man knowledge. Psalm 94 verse 10 And I give unto babes clearer knowledge than can be taught by man. He to whom I speak will be quickly wise, and shall grow much in the spirit. Woe unto them who inquire into many curious questions from men, and take little heed concerning the way of my service. The time will come when Christ will appear, the Master of Masters, the Lord of the Angels, to hear the lessons of all, that is, to examine the consciences of each one. And then will he search Jerusalem with candles, Zephaniah 1 verse 12, and the hidden things of darkness, 1 Corinthians 4 verse 5, and the hidden things of darkness shall be made manifest, and the arguings of tongues shall be silent. I am he who in an instant lift up the humble spirit to learn more reasonings of the eternal truth than if a man had studied ten years in the schools. I teach without noise of words, without confusion of opinions, without striving after honour, without clash of arguments. I am he who teach men to despise earthly things, to loathe things present, to seek things heavenly, to enjoy things eternal, to flee honours, to endure offences, to place all hope in me, to desire nothing apart from me, and above all things to love me ardently. For there was one who by loving me from the bottom of his heart learned divine things and spake things that were wonderful. He profited more by forsaking all things than by studying subtleties. But to some I speak common things, to others special. To some I appear gently in signs and figures, and again to some I reveal mysteries in much light. The voice of books is one, but it informeth not all alike. Because I inwardly am the teacher of truth, the searcher of the heart, the discerner of all thoughts, the mover of actions, distributing to each man as I judge meet. Chapter 44 Of Not Troubling Ourselves About Outward Things my son, in many things it behoveth thee to be ignorant, and to esteem thyself as one dead upon the earth, and as one to whom the whole world is crucified. Many things also thou must pass by with deaf ear, and must rather think upon those things which belong unto thy peace. It is more profitable to turn away thine eyes from those things that displease, and to leave each man to his own opinion, than to give thyself to discourses of strife. If thou stand well with God, and hast his judgment in thy mind, thou wilt verily easily bear to be as one conquered. O Lord, to what have we come? Behold, a temporal loss is mourned over, for a trifling gain we labour and hurry and spiritual loss passeth away into forgetfulness, and we rarely recover it. That which profiteth little or nothing is looked after, and that which is altogether necessary is negligently passed by, because the whole man slideth away to outward things, and unless he quickly recovereth himself, in outward things he willingly lieth down. Chapter 45 That we must not believe every one, and that we are prone to fall in our words. Lord, be thou my help in trouble, for vain is the help of man. Psalm 60, verse 11 How often have I failed to find faithfulness where I thought I possessed it, 
how many times I have found it where I least expected. Vain, therefore, is hope in men, but the salvation of the just, O God, is in Thee. Blessed be Thou, O Lord my God, in all things which happen unto us. We are weak and unstable, we are quickly deceived and quite changed. Who is the man who is able to keep himself so warily and circumspectly as not sometimes to come into some snare of perplexity? But he who trusteth in thee, O Lord, and seeketh thee with an unfeigned heart, doth not so easily slip. And if he fall into any tribulation, howsoever he may be entangled, yet very quickly he shall be delivered through thee, or by thee shall be comforted, because thou wilt not forsake him that trusteth in thee unto the end. A friend who continueth faithful in all the distresses of his friend is rare to be found. Thou, O Lord, thou alone art most faithful in all things, and there is none other like unto thee. O oh, how truly wise was that holy soul who said, My mind is steadfastly fixed, and it is grounded in Christ. St. Agatha If thus it were with me, the fear of man should not so easily tempt me, nor the arrows of words move me. Who is sufficient to foresee all things, who to guard beforehand against future ills, if even things which are foreseen sometimes hurt us, what can things which are not foreseen do, but grievously injure? But wherefore have I not better provided for myself, miserable that I am? Why, too, have I given such heed to others? But we are men, nor are we other than frail men, even though by many we are reckoned and called angels. Whom shall I trust, O Lord, whom shall I trust but Thee? Thou art the truth, and deceivest not, nor canst be deceived. And on the other hand every man is a liar. Psalm 116, verse 11, Romans 3, verse 4, Weak, unstable, and frail, especially in his words, so that one ought scarcely ever to believe what seemeth to sound right on the face of it. With what wisdom hast thou warned us beforehand to beware of men, and that a man's foes are they of his own household? Matthew 10, verses 17 and 36 And that we must not believe if one say unto us, Lo here or lo there. Matthew 24, verse 23 I have been taught by my loss, and oh that I may prove more careful and not foolish hereby. Be cautious, saith someone, be cautious, keep unto thyself what I tell thee. And whilst I am silent and believe that it is hid with me, he himself cannot keep silence concerning it, but straightway betrayeth me and himself, and goeth his way. Protect me, O Lord, from such mischief-making and reckless men. Let me not fall into their hands, nor ever do such things myself. Put a true and steadfast word into my mouth, and remove a deceitful tongue far from me. What I would not suffer, I ought by all means to beware of doing. Oh, how good and peacemaking a thing it is to be silent concerning others, and not carelessly to believe all reports, nor to hand them on further. How good also to lay oneself open to few, to seek ever to have thee as the beholder of the heart, not to be carried about with every wind of words, but to desire that all things inward and outward be done according to the good pleasure of thy will. How safe for the preserving of heavenly grace to fly from human approval, and not to long after the things which seem to win admiration abroad, 
but to follow with all earnestness those things which bring amendment of life and heavenly fervour. How many have been injured by their virtue being made known and too hastily praised! How truly profitable hath been grace preserved in silence in this frail life, which, as we are told, is all temptation and warfare. Chapter 46 Of having confidence in God when evil words are cast at us. My son, stand fast and believe in me. For what are words but words? They fly through the air, but they bruise no stone. If thou art guilty, think how thou wouldst gladly amend thyself. If thou knowest nothing against thyself, consider that thou wilt gladly bear this for God's sake. It is little enough that thou sometimes hast to bear hard words, for thou art not yet able to bear hard blows. And wherefore do such trivial matters go to thine heart? Except that thou art yet carnal, and regardest men more than thou oughtest. For because thou fearest to be despised, thou art unwilling to be reproved for thy faults, and seekest paltry shelters of excuses. But look better into thyself, and thou shalt know that the world is still alive in thee, and the vain love of pleasing men. For when thou fleest away from being abased and confounded for thy faults, it is plain that thou art neither truly humble, nor truly dead to the world, and that the world is not crucified to thee. But hearken to my word, and thou shalt not care for ten thousand words of men. Behold, if all things could be said against thee which the utmost malice could invent, what should it hurt thee, if thou wert altogether to let it go, and make no more account of it than of a moat? Could it pluck out a single hair of thy head? But he that hath no heart within him, and hath not God before his eyes, is easily moved by a word of reproach. But he who trusteth in me, and seeketh not to abide by his own judgment, shall be free from the fear of men. For I am the judge and the discerner of all secrets. I know how the thing hath been done, I know both the injurer and the bearer. From me went forth that word, by my permission this hath happened, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Luke 2 verse 35 I shall judge the guilty and the innocent, but beforehand I have willed to try them both by a secret judgment. The testimony of men often deceiveth. My judgment is true, it will stand, and it shall not be overturned. It commonly lieth hid, and only to few in certain cases is it made known. Yet it never erreth, nor can err, although it seem not right to the eyes of foolish men. To me, therefore, must men have recourse in all judgment, and must not lean to their opinion. For there shall no evil happen to the just. Proverbs 12, verse 21 whatsoever may be sent to him by God. Even though some unjust charge be brought against him, he will care little, nor again will he exult above measure, if through others he be clearly vindicated. For he considereth that I am he who try the hearts and reins. Psalm 7 verse 9 Who judge not outwardly and according to human appearance, for often in mine eyes that is found blameworthy which in the judgment of men is held worthy of praise. O Lord God, O Judge, just, strong, and patient, who knowest the frailty and sinfulness of men, be thou my strength and my whole confidence, for my own conscience sufficeth me not. Thou knowest what I know not, 
and therefore ought I under all rebuke to humble myself and to bear it meekly. Therefore mercifully forgive me as often as I have not done this, and grant me the next time the grace of greater endurance. For better unto me is thine abundant pity for the attainment of thy pardon than the righteousness which I believe myself to have for defence against my conscience, which lieth wait against me. Although I know nothing against myself, yet I am not hereby justified. 1 Corinthians 4 verse 4 Because if thy mercy were removed away, in thy sight should no man living be justified. Psalm 143 verse 2 Chapter 47 That all troubles are to be endured for the sake of eternal life. My son, let not the labours which thou hast undertaken for me break thee down, nor let tribulations cast thee down in any wise, but let my promise strengthen and comfort thee in every event. I am sufficient to reward thee above all measure and extent, not long shalt thou labour here, nor always be weighted down with sorrows. Wait yet a little while, and thou shalt see a speedy end of thine evils. An hour shall come when all labour and confusion shall cease. Little and short is all that passeth away with time. Do earnestly what thou dost, labour faithfully in my vineyard, I will be thy reward. Write, read, sing, weep, be silent, pray, endure adversities manfully. Eternal life is worthy of all these conflicts, yea, and of greater. Peace shall come in one day which is known to the Lord, which shall be neither day nor night. Zechariah 14 verse 7 but light eternal, infinite clearness, steadfast peace, and undisturbed rest. Thou shalt not say then, Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Romans 7 verse 24 Nor cry out, Woe is me, for my sojourning is prolonged. Psalm 120 Because death will be utterly destroyed and there shall be salvation which can never fail, no more anxiety, happy delight, sweet and noble society. O, oh, if thou sawest the unfading crowns of the saints in heaven, and with what great glory they now rejoice, who aforetime were reckoned by this world contemptibly, and as it were unworthy of life, Truly thou wouldst immediately humble thyself even to the earth, and wouldst desire rather to be in subjection to all than to have authority over one. Nor wouldst thou long for pleasant days of this life, but wouldst more rejoice to be afflicted for God's sake, and wouldst esteem it gain to be counted for naught amongst men. O, oh, if these things were sweet to thy taste, and moved thee to the bottom of thine heart, how shouldst thou dare even once to complain? Are not all laborious things to be endured for the sake of eternal life? It is no small thing the losing or gaining the kingdom of God. Lift up therefore thy face to heaven. Behold, I and all my saints with me who in this world had a hard conflict now rejoice, are now comforted, are now secure, are now at peace, and shall remain with me evermore in the kingdom of my Father. Chapter 48 Of the day of eternity and of the straitnesses of this life. O most blessed mansion of the city which is above, O most clear day of eternity which the night obscureth not, but the supreme truth ever enlighteneth. Day always joyful, always secure, and never changing its state into those which are contrary. 
O oh, would that this day might shine forth, and that all these temporal things would come to an end. It shineth indeed upon the saints, glowing with unending brightness, but only from afar and through a glass upon those who are pilgrims on the earth. The citizens of heaven know how glorious that day is. The exiled sons of Eve groan because this is bitter and wearisome. The days of this life are few and evil, full of sorrows and straits, where man is defiled with many sins, ensnared with many passions, bound fast with many fears, wearied with many cares, distracted with many questionings, entangled with many vanities compassed about with many errors, worn away with many labours, weighed down with temptations, enervated by pleasures, tormented by poverty. O oh, when shall there be an end of these evils? When shall I be delivered from the wretched slavery of my sins? When shall I be mindful, O Lord, of thee alone? When shall I rejoice in thee to the full? When shall I be in true liberty, without any impediment, without any burden on mind or body? When shall there be solid peace, peace immovable and secure, peace within and without, peace firm on every side? Blessed Jesus, when shall I stand to behold Thee? When shall I gaze upon the glory of Thy kingdom? When shalt Thou be to me all in all? O oh, when shall I be with thee in thy kingdom, which thou hast prepared from the foundation of the world for them that love thee? I am left destitute, an exile in a hostile land, where are daily wars and grievous misfortunes. Console my exile, mitigate my sorrow, for towards thee all my desire longeth. For all is to me a burden, whatsoever this world offereth for consolation. I yearn to enjoy thee intimately, but I cannot attain unto it. I long to cleave to heavenly things, but temporal things and unmortified passions press me down. In my mind I would be above all things, but in my flesh I am unwillingly compelled to be beneath them. So, wretched man that I am, I fight with myself, and am made grievous even unto myself, while the spirit seeketh to be above, and the flesh to be beneath. O oh, how I suffer inwardly, while with the mind I discourse on heavenly things, and presently a crowd of carnal things rushes upon me while I pray. My God, be not thou far from me, nor depart in wrath from thy servant. Cast forth thy lightning, and scatter them. Send out thine arrows. Psalm 121, verse 12. And let all delusions of my enemy be confounded. Recall my senses unto thyself. Cause me to forget all worldly things. Grant me quickly to cast away and despise the imaginations of sin. Succour me, O eternal truth, that no vanity may move me. Come unto me, O heavenly sweetness, and let all impurity flee from before thy face. Pardon me also, and of thy mercy deal gently with me, whensoever in prayer I think on anything besides thee. For truly I confess that I am wont to be continually distracted, for often and often, where in the body I stand or sit, there I myself am not, but rather am I there whither I am borne by my thoughts. Where my thought is, there am I, and there commonly is my thought where that which I love is. That readily occurreth to me which naturally delighteth or pleaseth through custom. Wherefore thou, who art the truth, hast said plainly, Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Matthew 6, verse 21 If I love heaven, 
I gladly meditate on heavenly things. If I love the world, I rejoice in the delights of the world, and am made sorry by its adversities. If I love the flesh, I am continually imagining the things which belong to the flesh. If I love the spirit, I am delighted by meditating on spiritual things. For whatsoever things I love, on these I readily converse and listen, and carry home with me the images of them. But blessed is that man who for thy sake, O Lord, is willing to part from all creatures, who doth violence to his fleshly nature, and crucifieth the lusts of the flesh by the fervour of his spirit, so that with serene conscience he may offer unto thee a pure prayer, and be made worthy to enter into the angelic choirs, having shut out from himself, both outwardly and inwardly, all worldly things. Chapter 49 Of the desire after eternal life, and how great blessings are promised to those who strive. My son, when thou feelest the desire of eternal happiness to be poured into thee from above, and longest to depart from the tabernacle of this body, that thou mayest contemplate my glory without shadow of turning, enlarge thine heart, and take in this holy inspiration with all thy desire. Give most hearty thanks to the supreme goodness, who dealeth with thee so graciously, visiteth thee so lovingly, stirreth thee up so fervently, raiseth thee so powerfully, lest thou sink down through thine own weight to earthly things. For not by thine own meditating or striving dost thou receive this gift, but by the sole gracious condescension of supreme grace and divine reward to the end that thou mayest make progress in virtue and in more humility, and prepare thyself for future conflicts, and cleave unto me with all the affection of thine heart, and strive to serve me with fervent will. My son, often the fire burneth, but the flame ascendeth not without smoke. So also the desires of some men burn towards heavenly things, and yet they are not free from the temptation of carnal affection. Thus, therefore, they are not acting with an altogether simple desire for God's glory when they pray to Him so earnestly. Such, too, is sometimes thy desire, when thou hast imagined it to be so earnest. For that is not pure and perfect, which is tainted with thine own self-seeking. Seek thou not what is pleasant and advantageous to thyself, but what is acceptable and honourable unto me. For if thou judgest rightly, thou must choose and follow after my appointment, rather than thine own desire, yea, rather than anything that can be desired. I know thy desire, and I have heard thy many groanings. Already thou longest to be in the glorious liberty of the children of God. Already the eternal home delighteth thee, and the heavenly country full of joy. But the hour is not yet come. There remaineth still another season, even a season of warfare, a season of labour and probation. Thou desirest to be filled with the chief good, but thou canst not attain it immediately. I am that good. Wait for me until the kingdom of God shall come. Thou must still be tried upon earth and be exercised in many things. Consolation shall from time to time be given thee, but abundant satisfying shall not be granted. Be strong, therefore, and be thou brave both in working and in suffering things which are against thy nature. Thou must put on the new man, and be changed into another man. Thou must often do what thou wouldst not, and thou must leave undone what thou wouldst do. 
What pleaseth others shall have good success. What pleaseth thee shall have no prosperity. What others say shall be listened to. What thou sayest shall receive no heed. Others shall ask and receive. Thou shalt ask and not obtain. Others shall be great in the report of men, but about thee shall nothing be spoken. To others this or that shall be entrusted. Thou shalt be judged useful for naught. For this cause nature shall sometimes be filled with sadness, and it is a great thing if thou bear it silently. In this and many like things the faithful servant of the Lord is wont to be tried, how far he is able to deny himself and bring himself into subjection in all things. Scarcely is there anything in which thou hast need to mortify thyself so much as in seeing things which are adverse to thy will, especially when things are commanded thee to be done which seem to thee inexpedient or of little use to thee. And because thou darest not resist a higher power, being under authority, therefore it seemeth hard for thee to shape thy course, according to the nod of another, and to forego thine own opinion. But consider, my son, the fruit of these labours, the swift end, and the reward exceeding great, and thou shalt find it no pain to bear them then, but rather the strongest solace of thy patience. For even in exchange for this trifling desire which thou hast readily forsaken, thou shalt always have thy will in heaven. There verily thou shalt find all that thou wouldst, all that thou canst long for. There thou shalt have all good within thy power, without the fear of losing it. There thy will, ever at one with mine, shall desire nothing outward, nothing for itself. There no men shall withstand thee, none shall complain of thee, none shall hinder, nothing shall stand in thy path. But all things desired by thee shall be present together, and shall refresh thy whole affection, and fill it up even to the brim. There I will glory for the scorn suffered here, the garment of praise for sorrow, and for the lowest place a throne in the kingdom for ever. There shall appear the fruit of obedience, the labour of repentance shall rejoice, and humble subjection shall be crowned gloriously. Now therefore bow thyself humbly under the hands of all men, nor let it trouble thee who said this or who ordered that, but take special heed that whether thy superior, thy inferior, or thy equal, require anything from thee, or even show a desire for it. Take it all in good part, and study with a good will to fulfil the desire. Let one seek this, another that. Let this man glory in this, and that man in that, and be praised a thousand thousand times. But rejoice thou only in the contempt of thyself and in mine own good pleasure and glory. This is what thou art to long for, even that whether by fire or by death, God may be ever magnified in thee. Philippians 1 verse 20 Chapter 50 How a desolate man ought to commit himself into the hands of God. O Lord, Holy Father, be Thou blessed now and evermore, because as Thou wilt, so it is done, and what Thou doest is good. Let Thy servant rejoice in Thee, not in himself, nor in any other, because Thou alone art the true joy. Thou art my hope and my crown, Thou art my joy and my honour, O Lord. What hath thy servant which he receiveth not from thee, even without merit of his own? 
Thine are all things which thou hast given, and which thou hast made. I am poor, and in misery even from my youth up. Psalm 138, verse 15 And my soul is sorrowful unto tears, sometimes also it is disquieted within itself because of the sufferings which are coming upon it. I long after the joy of peace, for the peace of thy children do I beseech, for in the light of thy comfort they are fed by thee. If thou give peace, if thou pour into me holy joy, the soul of thy servant shall be full of melody, and devout in thy praise. But if thou withdraw thyself as too often thou art wont, he will not be able to run in the way of thy commandments, but rather he will smite his breast and will bow his knees, because it is not with him as yesterday and the day before, when thy candle shined upon his head. Job 29 verse 3 And he walked under the shadow of thy wings. Psalm 17 verse 8 From the temptations which beset him. O Father, righteous and ever to be praised, the hour cometh when thy servant is to be proved. O beloved Father, it is well that in this hour thy servant suffer somewhat for thy sake. O Father, ever more to be adored, as the hour cometh which thou foreknowest from everlasting, when for a little while thy servant should outwardly bow down, but always live inwardly with thee, when for a little while he should be little regarded, humbled and fail in the eyes of men, should be wasted with sufferings and weaknesses, to rise again with thee in the dawn of the new light, and be glorified in the heavenly places. O Holy Father, thou hast ordained it so, and so hast willed it and that is done which thou thyself hast commanded. For this is thy favour to thy friend, that he should suffer and be troubled in the world for thy love's sake, how often soever, and by whomsoever, and whosoever thou hast suffered it to be done. Without thy counsel and providence, and without cause, nothing cometh to pass on the earth. It is good for me, Lord, that I have been in trouble, that I may learn thy statutes, Psalm 119, verse 71, and may cast away all pride of heart and presumption. It is profitable for me that confusion hath covered my face, that I may seek to thee for consolation rather than unto men. By this also I have learned to dread thine unsearchable judgment, who afflictest the just with the wicked, but not without equity and justice. Thanks be unto thee, because thou hast not spared my sins, but hast beaten me with stripes of love, afflicting pains and sending troubles upon me without and within. There is none who can console me of all things which are under heaven, but thou only, O Lord my God, thou heavenly physician of souls, who dost scourge and hast mercy, who leadest down to hell and bringest up again. Job 13 verse 2 Thy discipline over me and thy rod itself shall teach me. Behold, O heavenly Father, I am in thy hands, I bow myself under the rod of thy correction. Smite my back and my neck, that I may bend my crookedness to thy will. Make me a pious and lowly disciple, as thou wert wont to be kind, that I may walk according to every nod of thine. To thee I commend myself and all that I have for correction. Better is it to be punished here than hereafter, Thou knowest all things, and each of them, and nothing remaineth hid from thee in man's conscience. Before they are, thou knowest that they will be, 
and thou needest not that any man teach thee or admonish thee concerning the things which are done upon the earth. Thou knowest what is expedient for my profit, and how greatly trouble serveth unto the scrubbing off the rust of sin. Do with me according to thy desired good pleasure, and despise not my life which is full of sin, known to none so entirely and fully as to thee alone. Grant me, O Lord, to know that which ought to be known, to love that which ought to be loved, to praise that which pleaseth thee most, to esteem that which is precious in thy sight, to blame that which is vile in thine eyes. Suffer me not to judge according to the sight of bodily eyes, nor to give sentence according to the hearing of the ears of ignorant men, but to discern in true judgment between visible and spiritual things, and above all things to be ever seeking after the will of thy good pleasure. Oftentimes the senses of men are deceived in judging, the lovers of the world also are deceived in that they love only visible things. What is a man better because by man he is reckoned very great? The deceiver deceiveth the deceiver, the vain man the vain, the blind man the blind, the weak man the weak, when they exalt one another, and in truth they rather put to shame while they foolishly praise. For as humble St. Francis saith, What each one is in thine eyes, so much he is, and no more. End of chapter 50